Florida thing. I never thought like Florida had accents. I go somewhere else and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, we got accents. For sure. 100%. You know what Arizona accent is? Shit is terrible. Oh shit. Are we live now? Sorry, Arizona. Arizona's like a mix between like California and some other weird like slang. It's different. It's fucking different. Like Southern Cal or North Cal? That's different. I know, I know Arizona, they, they had the hard it's, R in Cali. That's it. Well, that's how they do it. They do that, they take a mix. It's like a mix between that and like somewhere in Oklahoma. Whatever. What's up? So we're headed out to the strength camp. Gonna go ahead and do a podcast with my boy Chris Barnard. Overtime athletes and then we are gonna go hit gorilla bench and do some bench pressing get a workout with my boy Matt off We got a about a smooth two hours and 53 minutes of driving so We're gonna make it happen We're gonna talk some shit uh, And let's go follow along because every time we take a picture, he likes to he likes to bulk up like he's 220 pounds. I swear he's not that big. But I out angled the shit out of him right there. And I didn't even flex. <laughs> so Dustin, DP, you ain't got nothing on me, dog. From that perspective, <laughs> obviously a phenomenal fighter. Fuck all that. I hear somebody tried my dog, said he looked like the Look like Black uh, the Black Post Malone. Malone. Come on now. <laughs> See, I get Richard Sherman. I get Larry Fitzgerald. I get a mix between Herb Dean and uh, John I Jones. I can see Larry Fitzgerald. But, but Black Post Malone? Oh, damn, sure. No, no, Richard Sherman. I Richard Sherman is number one on the list. Richard Sherman for sure. He's number one on the list. He has a Seattle Seahawks shirt, and I'm like, this motherfucker, he's trying to just fucking Halloween. <laughs> Mr. Mental Muscle. I didn't roast the cashews. Who the fuck? Who the fuck eats cashews? <laughs> I guess. You got peanuts. You got almonds. I guess that just the narrative of my life. The odd man. Somebody on here is like, I eat cashews. Shit. Well, all the two of us. Sorry for the people that eat cashews. I'm not trying to be, not trying to be rude. I just never fucking. I don't fuck with them. It's a, it's a unnecessary. It's not even a nut. You know that, right? Wait, wait, wait. What? Yo, yeah, have you nut. have you ever seen how they make them? I mean, wait, how, wait. how they like Elaborate. process? Okay, so totally. they have these trees, Spit that shit. and they have to take them, and it's like they only come with like one little nut on it, right? <laughs> and then, but it has like this acid and shit in the oil. So when the people are like, it's women that that do it. They break it down, and like their hands are all black and like burnt up from the acid, just to get one cashew. So that bag of cashews so that you eat. These blood cashews? <laughs> God damn. That's my fight. I got blood diamond cashews. You got blood cashews. Hey. So what does it fall under if it's not a nut? It's like a lagoon, I think. It's a tropical evergreen tree, like you said, and it produces a cashew seed and the cashew apple. Oh my God. Nut. This man, I'm spit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what no more. He, that's ridiculous. It's my last bag. I stand in solidarity. Yeah, it grows outside the fruit instead of inside. So scratch that lagoon shit. Definitely not that. This, I don't know how to feel right now. Shout out to Rooster on Podcast. Check it out. Subscribe. We're on episode six coming up. We shot about 20,000 of them motherfuckers. Yeah. We're about to be there though. But. I always used to come out this way because I fought in Tampa a lot. So I would always cut weight on this drive. So when I cut weight, I would always stop at that rest stop. And back then it wasn't a pilot. It was like a, just a regular truck stop, real like, real country. So I remember I was cutting to 155 and my coach was driving at the time. Shout out Anthony Esposito. You guys check out his video that we did together. But so, I was driving, he was driving, and I said, all right, pull over, I'm gonna go check my weight. And usually you check your weight periodically throughout the time, so at least you know where you're at. So like, I didn't give a fuck. I was like, I was already depleted like a motherfucker. We stop at the gas station. I, I, I stripped down, like completely. Like I didn't give a fuck. 
right? All I had was like my compression pants, my compression shorts on. So I stripped down, I put the scale out there, I weighed myself, I was like 157 or something. As we pull off, cops are behind us and they blow the sirens. Over. So and I'm already depleted, I'm like, fuck this shit. He comes behind me with the hand on his gun, like super stressed out. Somebody told him that I was half naked running across the gas station. I turned to him. And my coach is tripping because he's never had no confrontation with the police. Needless to say, I've had a couple of times, so I'm, I'm good. So I, I was sitting there, and he comes to the side, and I go, yeah, what's up? You know, if you guys know about weight cutting, you know that shit sucks, right? You don't want to deal with anybody, especially somebody who's harassing you for running through the gas station half naked. Quote, unquote. So I tell him, I say, no man, I'm, I'm cutting weight. He's like, cutting weight? For what? Meanwhile, like I said, we're in a very rural area. They don't know what that means. So he thought I meant like cutting people, like literally cutting people, like cutting dead weight in the gas station half naked. So I said, no, I, I'm a fighter. That, that made it worse. Yo, fighter! Now he's got his hand on his gun, about to pull it out the holster. I said, sir, I am an MMA fighter. I am cutting weight. We're on the way to weigh-ins. He's like, you weren't running through the gas station half naked? I said, no, sir. I stepped on the scale and got back into the car. You, you boys be good. We drove off. Probably the weirdest fucking 20 minutes of my life. This took about 20 minutes, by the way. I think I drifted after that probably three pounds because I was just so heated that I started sweating even more. Moral of this story is, don't step out in the middle of a gas station half naked to weigh yourself on the way to weigh-ins. It was like a pro-am, and I was fighting Kurt Holabar. I remember this one, it was the first, my first pro fight. It was the first time I cut to 155. We drove down there in a, in a rental in a rent -a car, a rental minivan, and they had a stop at Walmart, and I was like already, probably about maybe eight pounds away. So I'm like, fuck man, I don't have anywhere to cut weight in this fucking hick ass town in Louisiana. So I forgot, I think it was like Mandeville or something along the long lines of that. Um, Dustin knows where it was, but we parked in the parking lot. I'm like, though, listen man, just turn the heat on. I'm gonna put my sweater on and my, and my sauna suit and just sit in here for about 45 minutes. The outs outside, it was like 98 degrees. I shit you not. Then I turned the heat on all the way up and sat in the sat in the minivan while they went and shopped for like an hour in Walmart. This was like a super Walmart back then. So everybody in, in Louisiana is like the place to go, by the way. So they were walking around and I remember falling asleep. And I remember just like getting out and like, like a pool of sweat just dripped out of my sauna suit. And I made 56 just from sitting in the uh, in the minivan with the heat on, just chilling. I made my own sauna. Sometimes you have to be resourceful. That's how you do it. Like right now, like yesterday, I went and I was driving and I seen a, a truck full of PVC pipes. And like you know, a regular person would be like, "Oh, that's just PVC pipes. They can build some shit or whatever." You know, you use. It. I looked at that shit and I was like, man, that's that's a lot of foam rollers we can make. Like, it just, it's just different. Like, I see tires on the road, I wanna pick them up. They go put them in the gym. I'm like, okay, we could utilize this for the gym. I don't know why. Cause you say, I, I see the world completely different. I see the world through a gym's eyes. There's a lot of things in, in like the world that people don't understand. Like, you could use that to train with. You don't need to buy you know, expensive equipment if you don't have the money to do so. Just pick up some bricks, man. This drive I make on an easy one day trip. It's easy. Down and back. We got the, we got the podcast with Chris, and then we'll go to we get an upper body, right, a bench workout at Gorilla Bench. Hello. So, I'll see how that one goes. We're going to be good. Feel good. Got about three hours sleep. That's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> This is considered Crazy. South Florida, though. No. It's just West. So it's like West Florida. You know where the real South Florida is. Southeast. <laughs> Raw.
the so would you consider where all the greatest Stewart football South? players come from, by the way. Yes. One time for Lamar, who doesn't believe that. You guys know Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guy. Why would you say Virginia football is better than Florida football? Virginia's not in the conversation. And you're not even there. You're not even in the same. You, Florida, you are Texas, out the Cali. Fight. You're out of the conversation. You're out of the Holy three shit. or five. Georgia maybe can make a case. Damn. Oh, hey. Oh. Listen. They might be good, and, and and if anybody from Virginia is you know watching this video, I'm getting mad. <laughs> Stats don't lie. Numbers Most don't NFL lie. players, all top five, come from Ely, Dillard, St. Thomas, Northwestern, and Bell Glade. All from not just Florida, South Florida. Three of them from Broward, where we're from. So. As far as like, like um, I already got my three. Like, like cause the, cause I'm trying to say that back. It shouldn't be that, shouldn't be that because it's this, no, no. You have, but I have to say, I nailed that shit down. You have the, the most influential. The most influential with their massive. Massive yeah. with the fucking Tupac, uh, Jay Z. I got it. All right, put me on camera. Here we go. Yeah. Fuck that. I think you're wrong on all fronts. The three most influential rappers, not the three best lyricists. Obviously, Tupac is number one, mm -hmm. right? The next one, Eminem. Fucking knew it. You knew I, that. I, I, but listen, I make that claim. But listen, listen, listen. And the third one is Lil Wayne. Okay. Three most influential rappers of all time, no okay. matter what. I don't care what you say, because you look at all the white rappers now. Look at Logic, mm -hmm. right? He's, he's What's an NF? Look at all those kids. They sound just like Eminem, mm -hmm. right? I like them. They, okay. they, it's, it's some of the stuff I, I, I bump it too. Look at Lil Wayne. Every fucking rapper yeah. nowadays gets it. something from Lil Wayne. All the new rappers. And Tupac just set the baseline for. Thug life. I can, I can, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's it. You ask ask a kid right now who know who who the hot boys are. <laughs> ask a kid right now who 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 knows anybody else in Cash Money the or was in Cash Money. The, now the reason you the know, rap game is the way that it my is. My daughters know who Lil Wayne is. My daughters they know, don't know. They the know because of baby. We turkey. Yeah. They know label. Because, but the because, rapper was the listen. Question. Rap before was. Please drop a comment and and. And let me know who's the three most influential rappers of all time. First of all, and and secondly, just just put one if you know that I'm right. No, Grab my bag, but my mics are there. All right, what's going on, guys? So we are at Strength Camp, and we're gonna do a podcast with Chris Barnard. And you guys know him, Overtime Athletes. We're at Strength Camp, Yo Elliot, all of that there. So we're gonna talk with Chris about coaching, about business, about his lifestyle. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, a little bit early. 10.30? 30. All right, boys. Monday. I got a, uh, we about to start working with the Deerfield High School football team. Really? Yeah. There you go. They got some players, man. They just had two kids that went to Miami this last year. Yeah, but they got 15, they got 15 Division One hopefuls. We play, we play for them. Me and him play for them. Oh, really? Yeah, so it'd be all like all my modern shit. Oh, they yeah. you're like, well, damn, all right. Well, then I'm actually putting out quality stuff and it's making, it's making people's lives change. And I'm also coaching. Like, the problem is, is people don't have that help, that hustle. Like, they, they just don't have that grind mentality. Yeah. So, like, I'll do this and I'll be coaching for fucking six hours still. And then I'll do a, I'll do a, I'll do a YouTube video, maybe in this, as I'm coaching. Right. Or I'll do one after and put my fighters on. Right. Like I got put like four fighters on. Right. Now they're in, like the guys that are like regional scene guys. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's getting theirs. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then then the podcast is before the coaching. Yeah. You know, and since you have such a following with the sports teams, like I think if I if I tell these coaches, especially down there, that you're coming through, it'll be perfect. You know? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it, bro. All right. I'm down. You already know um, what time it is. All right. Bro. Always a pleasure. Thank you, bro. Yeah, absolutely, man. Drive safe, you know, my man. man. Pleasure to meet you. Sorry, why you're filming, dude? I'm good. 100%, pleasure. man. Cool, cool, cool. Hit me up you need Absolutely, bro. We'll talk some more, and I'll let you know next time I'm down. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, bro, we'll, we'll connect. Cool. Man, it's always good catching up with Chris, man. I, I got to even be a little bit selfish like I always do on the podcast and 
ask the questions Exit that I want to ask. Turn left so Avenue we, uh, we talked about business, talked about training. Usually we, we spend about 45 minutes every time we see each other talking about training anyways. But then it was really good because I'm, I'm actually opening up two gyms right now. And I know he has successful gyms in a franchise. So it is good to always talk to him about that too as well. So excited about... Uh, about this uh, podcast coming out make sure you guys stay tuned make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel the Rue strong podcast so you can uh get that first hand once it comes out now on to gorilla bench meet up with my boy matt uh gonna go ahead and hit some max effort north. upper so bench pressing here we go most people have c averages very rarely yeah there's yeah. the quote-unquote a students that make it great but most people are c averages not because they're dumb because like you said the structure anyone can follow a set of rules imitate it memorize it and cooperate it's the people who say you know what like you said with the pvc pipes those are the people you want on your team they can turn yeah. something that ain't nothing and make a project out of it yeah you know, people uh, like we talked about with people like in structure the ones that want to have a job is because of the fact that they're they like the fact that they're gonna get that paycheck no matter what whereas like i kind of live for the excitement of not knowing you know in some ways obviously you want to have structure you want to have your day structured but when it comes down to being in charge of your own life being an entrepreneur and having your own business and not having to deal with other people you know coming down on you or setting a ceiling where i have no ceiling you know what i mean so that makes a lot of sense honestly i'm more apt to taking the risk of potentially failing and I like that more because it makes my days a little bit more exciting oh, yes. and manageable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Otherwise, like people just kind of get get bored and life gets monotonous. So for the for the main part, sure. I think I would always be this this way. You know what I mean? There, there would never be a time where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna just stick with this job here. I'm always looking to raise the level. Same thing with all of us, you know. You look good. Huh? How you feel? I feel good because I got, I mean, I'm car, I, I, I built up to where I can have carbs. Yeah, yeah. still good. Yes. So I'm like, I mean, I got 300 grams of carbs. Oh, shit, sure. that's not so bad. Not bad, yeah. yeah. The only, like I said, I gotta get that, that weight down just to do this photo shoot. Uh, I'm gonna go to the next
Bill. You got a pull, Bill. Come on. Come on. Pull it. Come on. Singles. Let's go. Eight. Eight and eight. One. Keep it still. Keep it locked in. Come on. Two. Come on. We gotta work this back now. We gotta work this back up. No rotation. Go. One. All the way. No, no. All the way. To me. To me. Let's go. Four. Let's go now. All these elbows to me. Let's go. Get them back. Get them back. Throw them through it. Pull the sternum through it. Session, uh, upper back, uh, upper body, max effort. Pretty good. I hit a PR on uh, on the board press with chains. There were 80, 80 pounds at the top, and a uh, three forty-five. Was it three? Three thirty-five for a single, and then we backed it off and did some work down sets. So basically, getting all the volume in as possible, and then for the accessories. Basically went to failure on the last set. We did three sets in total. And then I got some rows in. The rows, I, I haven't hit that hammer machine in a while, so I wanted to work that too as well. And then finished off with some triceps and biceps, keep it simple. All right, so that was a good session. I don't really get a whole lot of high extreme sessions because of the fact that I train by myself pretty much. So it's good to get out here, train with Matt. He pushes me, I push him. He's a good coach, so he's been uh, coaching me for a minute in powerlifting. So it's good to have that too and that intensity and both of us like-minded, so worked hand in hand. Some people just can't hang, you know. Hey! Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> My bad, man. You all right? Hours of sleep. That's you all right? Well, we all on no sleep, so never That's it. It is what it is. They got me, me slipping. So that's a wrap. We're home now. Long day, but a fun one. Went to Chris Barner's strength camp. Got the podcast done. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you subscribe to the Drew Strong Podcast channel. Then we went in, got some got some training in with uh, with Matt over at Gorilla Bench. Hit a PR on that bench uh, variation, I should say. And uh, again, you guys got to see a little bit of myself. Got to see a little bit of my boys here. And uh, make sure you stay tuned for the next one. Let me know if you like this style of video, all the vlogs that I'll do. Let me know if you like it. Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification. Comment if you have any questions. And I'll see you again next time. Peace.